All right. <clears throat> Looks like we're live. So I'll say hello to everybody out there on Facebook. I hope you all enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend and got to catch some nice weather while remembering and, and thinking about our great service women and men. And welcome to another session of our Cat at Home series. My name is Dave Gerding. Uh, I'm a soil compactor product specialist with Caterpillar. And I'm joining you today from my home in Minnesota. So this video series, it's really meant to give you a way to connect and, and, and keep learning about cat equipment uh, from our product experts. And it comes straight from our homes and yours. So as I finish up uh, a little bit of housekeeping here, um, I'm going to show you a slide here that's got our uh, full vibratory soil compactor offering from Caterpillar. So on the left hand side, you got the CP pad foot models and then on the right side, you got the, the CS models. And as always, uh, I encourage you to check with your local Caterpillar dealer to see which machines are available in your region. But uh, for today's session, if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, we're going to focus on soil compaction. So um, we're not here or I'm not going to be here to talk about specifically about the machines. This is actually the only machine slide I have. Um, I'd rather focus more on application and compaction technology. So as we move along, uh, you can ask any questions in the comments section, and then I'll do my best to respond in real time. And then if there's a question you think of afterwards, or if this is something that you're watching, you know, days or weeks from now, go ahead and uh, don't worry, keep, keep the questions coming. We'll go ahead over the coming days and weeks, and we'll, and we'll try to answer them uh, in, the, in the comments section. So, all right, well, let's get started. Uh, I always like to, to start out thinking about your job sites and kind of the, the typical compaction scenario you guys encounter every day. So compaction can tend to be one of the phases of the job site. It doesn't necessarily get as much attention, may, might get overlooked a little bit. Um, you typically end up putting entry level operators in the machines. Um, and a lot of times we'll end up seeing that you, you end up putting multiple people on that same machine to compact the same area throughout the day. Uh, case in point here is Really, there's a lot of opportunity or room for inconsistencies in your compaction process, which can then lead to inconsistencies in your compaction results. Which leads me to the next question is, how do you ensure proper compaction today? What are you doing today on your job site to really ensure that, hey, you are going to pass that density test or that sniff, stiffness reading that the state's going to run? Um, number one, first and foremost, is you're probably trying to control the process somehow. Maybe it's based on your experience on that job site with that material, with that machine, uh, how many passes, how fast to compact, um, or maybe the state tells you exactly the process they want you to compact with, but you're probably trying to control the process somewhat. And at some point, you're probably going to measure. You got to know what your compaction level is. So this is usually done. Your quality assurance, quality control team usually ends up doing this before the state gets in there and runs their tests. And it's usually that post-compaction process spot test, right? Um, so then I was kind of like to flip it around and say, you know, what do you do the same for your grading and, and your other phases of, of your project? And usually the answer is no. You know, on, on a grading phase of the project, for example, you're going to get live measurement using GPS or laser on a lot of job sites today in North America. Uh, so you're measuring live. You know exactly where you're at according to that site plan, right? And then you might even be controlling uh, through implement control or blade control on the machine, actually controlling to that design file. So, you know, what's good for your grading operation, maybe there's technologies out there that you haven't really heard of or seen yet for compaction that you can also implement in that phase of the project as well. And that's really what I wanna focus on in the next 20 minutes or so. Um, I'm gonna introduce you uh, in the next 10 minutes or so to two technologies, Command for Compaction and CAT Compaction uh, technologies that allow you to control the process as well as measure your compaction level and then we're going to kick it out to our Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center for a live demo in the field of that uh, machine drive power or measurement technology. So as we get started here, remember, any questions come up, go ahead and put those in the comments section. Like I said, I'll try to, to keep, keep tabs on those and answer them live as possible. So the first technology we're going to talk through today is our command for compaction. So this is our brand new semi-autonomous solution for soil compaction. We just launched it at Con Expo, if any of you were there or saw any of the, the post-Con Expo videos. Uh, and what this, this semi-autonomous technology really does is it fully automates the compaction process for you. So you're still going to have an operator sitting in the seat of the, the cab of the machine, but the process will still be automated. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, 
one of the easiest ways I feel to, to kind of show you, you know, how the system works or the benefits is kind of walk you through uh, how does it work, right? So there's really three simple steps to automating the compaction process. Number one, first and foremost, I got to tell the system where to compact, right? So uh, don't worry, we're not going to have you create or any back office work for loading a, a site design file into the system. You're going to physically use the machine to record the boundary of the area you want to record. And the best way to show that is I'm going to bring up a quick video here and I'm going to walk you through that process and how that works. So what you do is you get yourself situated in one corner of the area you want to compact and you can't see behind my head there, but you'll see in a second. You hit record on the screen inside the cab and then you operate the machine up one side of the boundary. Now, there's nothing stopping you from vibrating and actually working while you're recording here. Uh, and also note here, any turning of the machine that you end up doing is going to be reflected in your recording. So you can use this on curved areas, uh, maybe in a road building application or something. Uh, once you get to that far end, you hit pause on, on the display and that stops the recording temporarily. Then you got to get yourself turned around. You can do that in a number of ways. Here I had the space. I had the time. I just simply pulled forward and turned around. Then you get on the other side and you hit record again and do the same thing on the other side. You just operate up that side of the boundary. Once you get there, you hit the stop button. Now the system's going to draw a boundary around that area that you recorded. Once you hit OK, it's going to actually create a compaction area inside that boundary and a path plan. OK, so it's as easy as that. Record, pause and stop in order to tell the system where to compact. Now, the second thing is you got to tell it the process or how to compact. So you give it number of passes, the ground speed and how much overlap. So that's how much that second compaction lane overlaps onto the first one you did. Right. You give it those three inputs. Next step is simply to press the auto button. At that point, the command system takes over and it actually controls the speed, direction, steering, and vibration of the machine. So it will actually drive itself. And like I said, you still have an operator sitting up in the cab, but they've kind of become less an operator at this point and more of a compaction process monitor and safety monitor on the machine. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, well, this sounds great. You know, I got good process control, but it's still got an operator sitting in the seats. What are, you know, what's the big benefit of a technology like this? So I'll run through a couple of those. Uh, first and foremost, um, by automating the process, you're ensuring that the process is done the way that you intended it to do, right? So you get that constant and correct speed, correct pass count. The process is done uniformly no matter who's sitting in the seat. So you can rotate different operators throughout the day in that same machine in the same area, and the process still gets done the way you intended it. Also, you can take a, a lesser skilled uh, novice operator or an experienced operator, and you still get that consistent, uniform process. So another benefit, speaking of consistency, is one, one of the leading causes of inconsistent compaction is poor coverage, right? So the more passes you have to make, if I have to make two to four passes, that's kind of easy to keep track of in my head, even over you know a medium to large area. But if I'm an operator and I got to make eight passes, 10 passes, 12 passes sometimes over the same spot to get compaction, that's really hard for me to keep track of. So I might miss some spots. I might only make eight passes instead of that 12 that I needed. And that's where command can really help boost your coverage. We did a study and we showed that it improved coverage about 60% versus a novice operator. So you get that predictably consistent coverage, which gives you predictive, predictively consistent compaction results. Now, the last benefit I'll talk about is simplicity, right? I, we all know that technology makes us more efficient. We need it on these job sites today, with these tight specs, tight timelines. But what you don't need is a technology that's so complicated, you need a whole back office to run it. So as we talked about, uh, the, the command system is easy. It connects to commonly used base stations. Right. So if you got a, bait, a GPS base station on your job site that you're running your grader off of today, the command system connects to that same base station. So there's no investment in additional technology past the command system itself. Uh, simple to operate. So uh, I just showed you how to set it up. I train operators usually in, a, in less than an hour on how to fully use the system. And then the last bullet point there is it's the first step towards autonomy. And I think that's an important one to keep in mind. We all know eventually, it might be five years, it might be 15 years, but we're going to start to see fully autonomous machines on job sites, just like we know we're going to see fully autonomous cars driving on the roadways someday. But I'm telling you, that day's not today, right? So this, this type of technology is coming in for compaction. It allows you to take that first step without diving headfirst into autonomy and allows you to kind of build up to that fully autonomous machine of the future. 
Now, this is my last slide on command. So if there's any specific questions, uh, let me know on command. Write it in the comments section. As we move on here to compact technologies, this is really going to be how you measure. So command was more about your process control. This co compact command compact technology, excuse me, are more about measuring your compaction level. So today we talked a little bit about it. You know, how do you know that you're compacted, right? Okay, I'm going to stop there real quick because I did get a question come in from Emma. She wants to know, I've seen command for dozing. Does command for compaction work the same? Perfect. I appreciate that, Emma. Um, so command for dozing, command for loading, command for excavating. You may have seen that at Con Expo as well. It's different than command for compaction. So command for compaction, as I stated, was semi-autonomous technology. You still have an operator in the seat but the process is fully automated. So the operator is not having to move any levers or propel handle or anything like that. Now, command for dozing and command for loading is more of an RC or remote control technology where you get the operator out of the cab. Now they've become a user. They're sitting in a universal station off site somewhere or could be on site. And now they're controlling a one for one control of the machine. So it's more a remote control uh, versus a semi-autonomous technology. Great question, thank you. So as we get back to compaction measurement, the question's still there. How do you know you reach compaction today? Well, as we talked before, you've got the experience of the operator or the foreman, a spe specified number of passes, but eventually you're going to end up verifying your compaction with a point-by-point -point test. Now, the problem with doing that is you're really not measuring a large area. It's usually 1% or less of the total area on your job site, and it's also post-process, right? You're measuring after your compactor's already been there. Um, it could also be time consuming and costly depending on which of those tests you're up, uh, using. Now, for about 25 years or so, this is not a new technology. We've had uh, machine integrated measurement technologies, and that's what I want to talk about today. So one of the great benefits of, of these integrated measurement technologies is that you're measuring the entire area. So anywhere that machine goes, anywhere that drum goes, you're going to get a measurement. So now I'm not just measuring 1%, I'm measuring everywhere that I'm compacting. And that's great news, right? You're also measuring during compaction, during the actual process. So that operator, that foreman, they have live information, right? They can make decisions during that process while you're still there on the compactor, not afterwards. Now, what decisions are those? Those decisions are to take action. Maybe we're supposed to do eight passes here. We've only done six, but I'm reaching my compaction. I can move on. It can be more efficient. I can save time. I can save fuel, right? I can save costs. But I think just as importantly, it's going to let us know when we can't reach compaction. Maybe we needed those same eight passes in a different area, and I've made 10 passes, and I still can't reach compaction. Uh, so this type of system, machine integrated measurement, is going to let you know in that moment you can't reach compaction. Let's investigate. Is it moisture content? Is it material? What's going on? But we know we have a problem live in the moment. And finally, the last point I'll make here before moving on is just – Remember that these machine integrated measurement technologies, they're not measuring density, right? Only, you can only really measure density through a sand cone test, mass divided by volume, or get an indication of density through your uh, Troxler or nuclear density test, right? So these machine integrated systems are actually giving you an indication of soil stiffness, right? So it's telling you the stiffness, not necessarily the density of the soil. One of those technologies that we, we sell at Caterpillar is machine drive power, okay? MDP is what we call it. And this MDP technology really works based on rolling resistance. So you can see on screen here, uh, there's kind of a close-up of what's going on in front of the drum. See a little bow wave of material in front of the drum. Uh, and you can sometimes see that with a heavy machine in a, in a soft soil. You can kind of see that with your eye. But that little bow wave creates some rolling resistance. And we need a certain amount of energy to overcome that and move the machine, right? Well, we're just reading kind of the inverse of that and giving you a stiffness indication. The higher the rolling resistance, the harder it is to move the machine, the lower the MDP value. The stiffer the material, the easier it is to move it, the higher the MDP value. Now, to get people to understand this, I like to talk about something that almost everybody in the world has, has operated, a wheelbarrow, right? So if you're in your backyard, you load your wheelbarrow up, you got a bunch of dirt, rocks, whatever in there, and you start to move it. It can be kind of heavy, right? But then you move around to your front yard and you take it over your driveway, whether it's concrete or asphalt, and what happens? Lo and behold, it gets, it gets easy. You, you feel like Superman. Well, what changed? The load inside the wheelbarrow didn't change. 
you certainly didn't get any stronger in that two minutes it took you to come around to the front of your house. The only thing that really changed there was the stiffness of the material that you're moving the wheelbarrow on, your driveway versus your backyard. The driveway being stiffer, it's a lot easier for you to move that wheelbarrow. Same thing with MDP. That's exactly what's going on and how we're measuring or getting an indication of the stiffness value of the soil. Now, what we love about MDP, it can be used in a wide variety of applications. So you can use it in high clay content soils on a pad foot machine. You can even use it on that 815 or 825, those tamping foot uh, compactors. Um, and it also takes measurement with or without the drum vibrating. So some of the other technologies out there are accelerometer based, right? You have to have your drum vibrating in order to get a reading. So that works on a lot of job sites, but on some job sites, maybe the last couple passes you have to make are in static or no vibration. Well, you're not going to get a reading with an accelerometer based system. And that's where MVP shows an advantage. Now, usually when you start talking compaction technology with, with some customers, they, they tend to get a, a, a little nervous and say, hey, yeah, that's, I, need it. I need all that stuff on the grader, but I don't need all this fancy technology on a compactor. Come on, you know, it'd be great to have an indication, but I don't need all the, all, you know, the mapping systems and stuff. Well, that's great because we've got scalable technology for you. So we can meet whatever need you have. If you need something entry level, you can use a system like we just talked about. It's a simple measurement, MDP or accelerometer based at compaction meter value. Uh, that's that simple readout on your standard machine display. It's nice, low cost entry level technology that gives you an indication. It lets your operator know, are we good or are we bad, right? Now, you wanna get a little more into the technology into what we call intelligent compaction. You had a mapping system on top of that measurement. And what that does is it ties a GPS location to that compaction measurement. So now you can document the process. This is great for your quality assurance, quality control teams that really like this. And a lot of states are starting to require that you do have mapping documentation to show your compaction level throughout the, the job site. Finally, you can add connect as a third layer of technology you can add here. And that really allows, if you've got a large fleet of machines, maybe a handful of machines compacting some large infrastructure project or maybe a dam perhaps, uh, they can all share information with each other on that same job site. So from one machine, I can see the aggregate number of passes we've made or the aggregate compaction value, not just from my own machine. It also allows you to send that data, that compaction data through the cloud. So you get near live monitoring through the back office on the Vision Link portal. And again, that's, that's subscription dependent. So that was my last slide on our compaction measurement technologies. At this point, I'm going to kick it over to uh, Nathan Myers. He's our expert operator. He's out at our Edwards Demonstration and Learning Center, and he's going to show you how to use machine drive power MDP in the field. Nathan, are you with us? I am, Dave. Thanks for that introduction. That's a little, little overdone there. <laughs> but hey, uh, that was a great explanation on, on you know, all of the, the offerings for this machine. And firsthand, I've had the opportunity to run that command for compaction. And I tell you what, it makes, makes the job a lot easier. And it, it just really helps, you know, less passes, gets, get, you become more productive throughout the day. And at the end of the day, the, the owner of the company, he sees the, uh, the money go back into his pocketbook from the, that machine not working as hard out there. So, and consistent results. So that's really good. So a couple things I want to talk about today is, you know, reiterate what, what Dave talked about with the MDP. I'm going to talk on that. I'm also going to talk about the auto vibe feature on these machines and then also the auto speed control. They're, they're very simple, but yet very important to the operator. So if we transition over to the keypad over here, I'll kind of walk you through what, what we have going on. So there's not many buttons uh, for, the, for the operator to, to really have to work with in here. But the first one, at the bottom right hand corner, this is the auto vibe, auto vibe feature. So it's simply turning it off or turning it back on. That is going to manually engage or automatically engage that vibratory uh, wheel inside the drum as I'm going. So instead of me clicking a button to turn it off or on, it's going to automatically do it when I either stop or do a directional change. The next one up is just the frequency, low amplitude, high amplitude. That, that's really important for an operator when they're deciding how well they want to compact. We go up here, I can choose how many times, uh, how many times per minute that drum hits, impacts the ground. That again affects our, our density in the ground. But the one I want to really focus on again is up here on the top left. You see the, the snail plus or minus down here. So this is our speed control. So as an operator, I, 
I do have a joystick that I can push forward and manage my speed, pulling it back and forth, uh, you know, going forward and reverse. And I could go half speed by only throwing the joystick half half forward. But speed control is very important when you want a consistent uh, density in the ground, when you want that soil stiffness to be exactly perfect. So if I'm going two and a half miles an hour, because I've moved the joystick two and a half, and then the next pass, I accidentally push that joystick a little bit farther. Now I'm going three miles an hour. That can overall affect the soil, soil stiffness. So now what I can do is adjust at, adjust the speed by a percentage and still give it full command. I'm going to the end of the stroke of the, of the joystick and I'm consistent every single time, forward and reverse. And again, end of the day, less passes, you know you're, you're hitting uh, the soil stiffness that you need to in the ground for, for uh, to pass inspection. So I'm gonna turn my parking brake off and I'm gonna demonstrate this auto vibe feature. So I'm gonna start with it off first and show you how it works here. So as I get going, I have an area that's been uh, that's uncompacted and I have set my auto speed control at two and a half miles per hour. So with the click of a button, the vibratory drum comes on. So now let's say I get flagged down or I, someone tells me to stop. When I stop, the vibratory drum keeps going on. What can happen? I get a divot here in the ground. That doesn't happen. That doesn't make things really good for the inspector. So if I continue on, turn the auto vibe on, and I come to a stop, it automatically kicks it off. Again, as an operator, it's one less thing I have to worry about. And let's let's face it, when you're a new guy on the job, you're you're the the greenhorn as we call them in the industry. This is one of the first machines you get you you get put on, but it is really one of the more important jobs. So anything we can do to help that operator out really makes a difference. So I start back up, vibratory turns back on, and we're good. I go to a direction change. I go all the way to reverse. It pauses it for a second and then turns it right back on. And then if I want to completely disable it, click of the button on here and it turns it off. So that's a little bit about the auto uh, the auto vibe feature that's on here. And I'm going to leave that on. And for the sake of being inside this arena in the viewing area, and got a really nice uh, glass encased viewing area, I don't want to break that glass. <laughs> We've learned from experience it's expensive. So I'm going to keep that off. The other part we're going to talk about is that speed control. So as I'm backing up here, and I'm going to switch over to a, a different area, and get on the fly, if you look at my monitor, it'll tell you, that I'm going roughly 2.4 to 2.5 miles an hour. And if I click the, the, the turtle up, you can see percentage 78, I can go to 2.6, 80%, 2.6, 2.7. Those are things that changes here for me, but I'm gonna stick at 2.5. And that's what I felt really, uh, really helps with the, the compaction here. So one of the other things we're gonna talk about is MDP. So as I'm rolling this, I'm using the feature on, on the, the display here to let me know what my MDP is. So again, as Dave talk, talked about earlier, it's just a number. It's not really, it's unitless. There's, it's just a reference point. So what I did before I came over here and compacted this area, I went to an area that I knew was compacted, had passed inspection, and I rolled over it at 2.5 miles an hour. And it told me that that soil, or at that number that I needed was 145. So going that same rate, that's my new target. And in the monitor, I can change that. So if you can see on the monitor here, there's a, it's real small, but it says 145. And currently it's telling me I'm at 140. So I have a little bit more to go. So as an operator, I'm constantly watching this as I'm driving forward or, or operating forward in reverse, seeing if there's any changes. Like, you know, every pass, it should get a little bit, that number should get a little bit closer to 145. But what this also tells me is maybe there's an area that's not compacting well. It's not healing up. Let's say uh, our, our good buddy Josh Hayes was running the articulated dump truck and he was bringing in material and, you know, the, the dozer was pushing it and we move on to the next area. Well, one of those loads was a, a, a load of sand. It wasn't supposed to come in here, but it gets dumped. Well, this is going to help me identify that area. So if you watch really, really closely here, you see I'm at 145, 141, 139, 141. And I noticed there's a spot here. It'll go down to 142. 
right there. Went down to 137, 136. That's telling me, hmm, there's something there. Let's go back over it and double check. And again, it's using that rolling resistance uh, feature. So when I'm in reverse, the machine acts a little differently. So that's a different number that I need to focus on. But what we're really focusing on is forward. So go back. We'll go back forward. So we're looking, we're at 145, 141. Now we're back down to 137. There is a spot here that's really soft. So that's letting me know before I even move on, you know, most operators would probably try to hide it and maybe the inspector wouldn't find that out. But being that I'm an honest guy, I'm gonna let, let Josh know, hey, we better let the inspector know or let the, the operator or the, the owner, maybe we need to come test this, dig it up, replace it with some good soil. But to take this one step further, we talked about uh, the compact feature, the intelligent compaction. If we can tie this number into GPS, which we, we may already have if we have uh, our, uh, our command for compaction system, I'm able to, on my screen, see where this roller has been and where it's traveled. And every pass, it gives me a different color. So it ties that MB, MDP, machine drive power, into the display up here. And we know green is good, green is go. So I keep rolling, I set my target on my display up here, and I'm able to achieve that you know, the more passes. And it lets me know, hey, you're good here, you don't, no need to go back over it. And it's also gonna let me know the amount of passes that I've made. So the days of just being able to, you know, the, the foreman coming up to you say, all right, make five passes back and forth and keep working your way across the field. Well, maybe I don't need five passes. Maybe it only needs three passes. And that this whole system is gonna help me understand that and help get that job done quicker. So it's a great feature, really easy to use. I mean, heck, if I can use it, Dave can use it, we're all good. So with that, Dave, I'm gonna throw it back to you and uh, see if there's any questions out there. Great, yeah, really appreciate that, Nathan. Uh, great, great overview. I really liked how you, you kept touching on the theme of consistency, right? Um, compaction, a lot like a lot of the other phases or processes that you end up doing on a job site, they, it all ties back to how consistent can you be in your process, and that gives you your consistent results. So we talked through consistent speed, that auto vibe function of ensuring that you know you get that vibration system cut off and turned back on at the, the precise moment that you need it. All of that kind of plays into getting more consistent results and, and passing your density test more often. Um, great. Appreciate it, Nathan. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show an, another couple slides to wrap things up here. Um, we talked a lot about uh, technology solutions today uh, Two of those technologies. One was that command for compaction. And again, that gives you that process control by automating your compaction process. It gives you that complete control of the operation, you know, so you get that consistency that you really need. And it's going to boost your overlap. It's going to boost your coverage, right? We talked about 60%. Then there's how, how's my compaction level? How compacted is the soil? How stiff is it? You're gonna know that through CAT compact technologies and you get that measurement through that live stiffness indication. And you can add mapping system onto it for that full documentation of the process and the compaction level. And again, these technologies, they can be used together as a full suite of solutions. You can use one or the other, uh, depending on what your job site needs are. Complete process control, and knowledge of your stiffness or compaction level. We offer both. And with that, I'll open it up and see if there's any other questions coming in at this point. I know we're kind of running up on time. And remember, if there's any questions after the fact that you, you end up coming up with or any, any other knowledge you want on this subject or anything relating to soil compaction, soil compactors, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments section. Um, and we'll go ahead and answer those uh, over the coming days and weeks. So with that, um, I will say thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. We're right at the, the 30 minute mark here. Um, and I'll put a plug in for next week, which is June 3rd on the Cat at Home uh, site. We're gonna be going through forestry, industrial and waste machines. So you don't wanna miss that one. Thank you, same time, same place next week. We'll see you then, bye.